Hi, Tense. My name is Kent Nunkman. I'm a visual artist. I'm Swampy Cree from Manitoba. I'm a member of Fisher River First Nation. And uh, I'm really happy to be and honored to speak at the Poundmaker Festival. Um, I've known Floyd for many years, and Floyd asked me to talk a bit about uh, the, my paintings and images that um, speak to the residential school experience. So this painting, The Scream, it's titled The Scream. And this is a painting uh, that I made in, I guess, around 2017 or prior to 2017, I guess 2015, 2016, somewhere in there. And uh, this is to um, speak to uh, the experience of residential schools. And it was part of a much larger body of work, uh, an exhibition that I put together that toured Canada for three years, beginning in 2017. So I guess around 2015, I was approached by the University of Toronto, uh, the director of the Yard Museum there, to see if I'd be interested in doing a response exhibition to Canada's uh, celebration of its 150th birthday. So I thought this was a really good opportunity to really draw focus to um, various um, aspects of my work that were critical of the colonial period. And so I came up with this exhibition titled Shame and Prejudice. And in that exhibition, I created nine distinct chapters exploring um, the experience of Indigenous people um, through the colonial period. And one of the chapters um, spoke directly to residential schools. And my grandmother was a survivor of residential schools, as, as were her, her brother and sister. Um, uh, they went to the Brandon Residence School in Manitoba. So uh, this experience uh, was close to home for me. Um, many residential school, uh, I, I don't know if I should say the word students because in many, in many cases, uh, uh, the, the people who attended residential schools were actually um, uh, not really students. Um, they were in situations of uh, la forced labor. <laughs> so even the word school sometimes doesn't really um, suit uh, that experience um, correctly. In any event, um, I decided that I wanted to speak to, to that experience. And I thought that the best way to do that for my exhibition was to focus on the removal of the children and that's where the idea for the uh, scream uh, came from. And um, when I thought about that, um, the impact of, of the loss of children, it really got me thinking about uh, history painting and the precedence uh, in history painting, Western, uh, the tradition of Western painting uh, that depict, uh, you know, violence uh, perpetrated against children. So. I was thinking specifically about um, the massacre of the innocents, uh, and these that 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 story, uh, which was uh, a biblical story about King Herod, who um, you know heard that uh, the king of the Jews was born in the city of Bethlehem, so he had all the firstborn children in the city of Bethlehem um, slaughtered. So there was this uh, very violent act being perpetrated against children. So in probably 2008 or maybe even a little bit later, I, I was at the Prado Museum in Spain. And I remember uh, standing in front of this painting here. And uh, it's, a, it's a painting depicting um, the, uh, a firing squad um, about to um, uh, shoot uh, the Spanish patriots. And uh, it's a very large painting. Um, it has quite an emotional impact. And I stood in front of that painting and I thought, you know, this is something that I, I would like to achieve as an artist because I remember being so moved by this painting and, and thinking at the same time, you know, indigenous experience in North America uh, has never been authorized into the canon of art history in this way. Uh, in fact, the Indigenous experience on this continent has been largely erased by 
uh, by, by the settler cultures who came here and created their own version of art history. So I wanted to make paintings that could really authorize indigenous experience into, into the canon of art history. And so I wanted to really harness the vocabulary of history painting to make paintings that really spoke to indigenous experience. So fast forward years later uh, to you know, 2015, I had the opportunity to then really bring, bring that um, inspiration of making history paintings that could speak to indigenous experience. So for the screen painting, I looked at these paintings uh, made by artists like Peter Paul Rubens. And um, this is a painting called Massacre of the Innocents. And it's, um, it's a painting that's at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And uh, Rubens also made this version. So these are very violent paintings. And you can see there's quite a bit of um, action in these paintings. And uh, so I was really taking inspiration from art history for the uh, for how I wanted the the um, the violence to be depicted in my own work. So the first stage uh, of of this process was to make pencil sketches, and without having a full composition in mind, I made uh, a number of sketches of nuns and mounties and priests, very violently removing little children from their parents' arms. And this is the early stages in the very beginning of how the painting uh, composition uh, came to be. And these are tiny little drawings, like maybe just a few inches uh, wide. And, uh, but it gave me the, the, um, the feeling and the emotion that I wanted to capture in the final painting. So the screen painting, uh, when I finally um, opened it at Shame and Prejudice, it became kind of the center of the exhibition. It had a profound uh, emotional impact on, on viewers and the audience, whether they were Indigenous or non-Indigenous. I think a lot of people understood the impact of what I was trying to communicate. So typ typically with my work, I also do, you know, uh, do works in series. So I, I started to explore other ways of creating this, telling the same story in different compositions. And these are all part of that larger series uh, about the removal of children. This one is quite small. This is a painting very similar to this scream. It's quite, it's the same size and it's called the scoop. So I also wanted to refer to the, the removal of children in the 1960s with the 60s scoop. So I was also going for a kind of like ambiguous time period, not really setting it in the 19th century because residential schools began in the 19th century, but they really spend a period of about a hundred years or more. And so I wanted these paintings to feel like they could be happening in the 19th century, but also be happening maybe in 1950 or 1970. And um, so I was really going for that kind of timeless quality. And the thing about um, the Scream, when I, po when I originally posted the Scream on Facebook, it was a few days before uh, Shame and Prejudice opened. And that painting quickly went viral. And it was you know my first viral post. And, it was kind of amazing to watch how that, that image went just across the country and was being shared so widely. And I think we had about 300,000 views within a matter of days. And that gave me uh, an, a, a, a kind of um, a premonition, I guess, or an idea of, of how, um, how, how people would respond to that painting. And um, in recent uh, weeks and, and the last couple of months, as um, uh, many hundreds or over a thousand uh, graves have now been um, discovered as crime scenes at residential schools, the screen painting has been shared again many, many thousands of times. So it's been kind of um, very rewarding for me as an artist to have captured. Um, 
the, the, you know, an image that speaks to this experience. And it, it certainly, you know, when I made that painting and made this series, it was really just to speak to my own family's experience, but also to the experience of many thousands of other indigenous people across this country. But I had no idea that it would really reach such a wide audience. So I wanted to share a little bit more about um, the Shame and Prejudice exhibition because um, just to provide context of, of, of how this work fit into this larger narrative. So again, going back to the, the, the sketches, you can see that the, um, the sketches of the removal of children were really conceived at the same time that I was conceiving the other chapters of the exhibition. And one of those chapters was on sickness and healing. And as I kind of broke down shame and prejudice into nine different distinct chapters, about the telling of, of you know, this story uh, to, to counter Canada's celebrations about itself. I wanted to kind of reach all the way back to the period of New France and kind of work forward from there. But one of the chapters I wanted to speak about was um, sickness and healing. The sickness that came to our communities through diseases, through mental illness, through the different impacts of the colonial project. And in the top, uh, left corner there, you can see the, the first little sketch, uh, which I was basing on a Caravaggio painting uh, called Death of the Vir titled Death of the Virgin. And so this is how I work, you know, I create a sketch. And then uh, in this, um, for this exhibition, I also started really working with uh, models, bringing people into the studio, photographing them, uh, making digital images of, of these um, compositions and then that way my my um, my studio my team of uh, assistants were able to help me they were better able to help me with when I was able to provide them with the digital images to give us better reference for for the stories that we wanted to tell so um, this painting appeared as uh, the central image for the sickness and healing chapter there was another um, painting here that depicted you know the um, this was really to speak to the beginning of the, uh, the um, treaty period, the signing of the treaties and uh, specifically Poundmaker and Big Bear who were you know, forced to surrender and um, to um, sign treaties. Uh, ultimately, they were also thrown in jail at Stony Mountain Penitentiary. So uh, this painting became central to the exhibition as well. So this is uh, sort of where the exhibition began in the period of New France. And I wanted to talk about how indigenous people, this, this was you know, before uh, the treaties were signed and, and um, indigenous people were not yet impacted by the colonial policies. This chapter um, with this, this long table, this long dining table was kind of a transition uh, chapter that took us from that, that period of plenty and that period of opulence, I guess, of, of the period of New France when, when First Nations people were still partners in the economy, they were part of the fur trade. Um, and the table transitions from this kind of uh, opulent end of the table uh, to a more desiccated end of the table and the table itself becomes kind of desiccated. Um, and the table is laid with bones, um, but this was really about the destruction of the food source, the primary food source for the Plains people, the, the buffalo. And so there were images um, and many objects taken from collections, uh, museum collections across the country. And they were, I curated those along with my own artworks. These are uh, plates that I made, I call them starvation plates. And they, uh, on each plate, there was an archival image printed of uh, these mountains of buffalo bones uh, from the Glenbow archives, just to give a sense of the scale, the mass destruction of the buffalo, which preceded, you know, the ultimate um, uh, forcing of, of uh, the Plains people to, um, to end up on, on reserves and to sign the treaties. 
<clears throat> and the railroad also factored into this and the railroad became part of that burden of the, the, the thousands and, and millions of, of settlers to the West. So here's an image of um, this painting. It's called The Subjugation of Truth. And I decided to also curate um, images of the colonial leaders um, and to put, to put that in context. Again, it was very much about wanting to insert history paintings into this canon of art history uh, because the perspectives of indigenous people have been, largely been erased or left out of the telling of, of the story of this continent. And this is why so many people nowadays are often shocked when they hear about stories about um, residential schools because they were never taught these things in our education system for a reason. It was deliberately kept from, um, from out of the education system. So I've heard so many times about people who you know, graduated from universities and they never learned anything about that aspect of, of the history of this continent and the history of this country. So it was an opportunity to reach many Canadians and educate people um, to bring them to an awareness about the history of this country. And, um, you know, with recent news items about the discovery of so many unmarked graves, there are more, more and more Canadians are learning about these dark chapters of the history of their own country. I, uh, one of the objects or, or things that I was really um, happy to find and to be able to exhibit were pound makers moccasins. And so these were included um, in, in this um, chapter of the exhibition. The scream uh, had its own room. I decided to paint the walls black like chalkboard black. And um, I was able to borrow a number of cradle boards um, I wasn't able to borrow as many cradle boards as I wanted. I wanted to line all the walls with as many cradle boards as possible, but uh, because of conservation issues, I was only uh, able to borrow um, 11 of them. So three of them stayed, remained outside the room and the other eight went inside the room with the scream. But uh, as Canadians are learning, many thousands of children uh, perished at the residential schools and did not survive. So this room was really intended to be uh, an homage to those lost lives and um, not having uh, as many cradle boards as I wanted gave me uh, the creative challenge of uh, still depicting, you know, um, numbers and uh, to represent the missing uh, children. And so I decided to use these ghost boards, I called them, uh, to fabricate these uh, cradle boards, tikkanogans, and to also use chalk outlines uh, as a way to represent those missing uh, children. So that pretty much ends my presentation. Um, so I just wanted to thank uh, Floyd and the Poundmaker Festival for inviting me and um, I, I, I hope that uh, this brings some, some awareness to my work and to also um, some of these histories that uh, uh, many Canadians uh, are not familiar with. So thank you.